Join us in this episode as we take our time and explore the trek north in the Kalbarri. We visit all the hot spots plus more. Driving through days and nights won't stop for traffic lights. G'day, we are Sparkies on the Loose. Both electricians. This is Curtis. My name is Amy, and this is our trusty four-legged apprentice, Rusty. We've been travelling around Australia for the past few years in our car and caravan. We're not afraid to get off the beaten track, and we have been documenting our adventures on the road as we go. Hit subscribe, sit back, and buckle up. Hey guys, so just left Geraldton this morning. Done all our errands, all topside with everything, ready to uh, do Calberry and Shark Point. Shark Bay, sorry, and Steep Point, all that, um, for our next major shop, which will be in Ireland. So, all locked and loaded. Okay, it's going to BCF, super cheap. Got some oil, got some fishing lures, got a new fishing rod, this is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're off to Lucky Bay. Just Obviously, not Lucky Bay in Esperance, Lucky Bay in North Perth. South of uh, Calabari, it's a low cost camp, $15 a night. Um, so the weather's not the best, but it's meant to be sunshine for the rest of the week. So we'll go check it out and we'll probably spend a few days just chilling around there. En route to Lucky Bay Campground, we stopped here at Port Gregory Convict side to stretch the legs and have a look around. The Linton Convict Hiring Depot operated from 1853 to 1857 and was used to help supply labour to the Geraldton Lead Mine. There are plenty of signs throughout the site to tell you about what each building was used for. Like this was an old police station, you can see the jail cells. Even if the sky is falling down. Well, we continued north and made it to the entrance of the campground. It's a few kilometres in on a good dirt track. We made it to the ranger station, got ourselves a camping permit and headed on in. The ranger told us about some sites that were right on the beach. We decided to unhitch the van and have a look. It was definitely far too boggy to take the van into these beach sites, so we turned around and set up in the campground. So this was our Lucky Bay camp spot. As you can see, plenty of room to spread out from fellow campers and only a short stroll to the water's edge. Yeah, copy that, I'll meet you down there. So yeah, we just decided today, Amy's just setting everything up in the caravan, that we're just gonna go down to the beach and have a fish. We met up with Travel in Our Backyard. Wow! And we're gonna go meet Ben and Haley down the beach now and go for a bit of a fish and see if we can catch anything. And we'll spend half the day there, then we'll come back and do a big cook up tonight. So it should be good. Hey. Ah. <laughs> All right, let's hit it. We swung by Ben and Hales' campsite and then headed straight onto the beach. We parked up near the lagoon, a large section of water protected by a reef shelf. As you can see, it was a popular spot with a handful of cars parked up here. While Kurt was droning the reef from the air, we agreed that it looked nice and worth pulling out the flippers and snorkel for an underwater explore.
The water was so clear and so blue. It didn't take us long to find some marine life. I tried my luck with the spear gun, but no luck unfortunately. Ben also tried with his spear gun and well... Sorry for my shaky footage, I was laughing too much at what I was seeing. I'd never seen a fish so big, let alone it being speared. So this is a Samson fish, a giant of the sea. Unbelievable and what a memory to have made here. <laughs> So what do you do with a fish that big? You strap it to your tailgate and parade it back to camp. That's what. <laughs> A great day spent by the water. That night we headed round to Ben and Hales's camp for dinner. Okay company, great lamb. Okay company. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love you mate. <laughs> Well, after two nights spent here, we decided to pack up and move closer into Calbarry. Hey guys, so just left Lucky Bay campground this morning. Nice little spot, $15 a night, and yeah, nice short walk to the beach. Very boggy though, I hate it. Very boggy, extremely boggy. It's we've gotten into this soft sand at the moment. It's crazy. So yeah, if you get if you ever go on this beach, deep flight to bloody sixteen easily. It's yeah. Crazy. Is there a lot of people get bogged? Yeah. They got themselves out, but still, like it was pretty bad bogged. Yeah. And um, now we're packed up, hitched up. We're gonna head back and check out the Pink Lagoon. When we came through the other day, it was raining, so we're gonna go back and hopefully see it nice, bright and pink. And we're heading up to Calbarry, um, and there's a campsite up there on the Mer Merchant River. So we're gonna probably stay out for a couple of nights, so that's the plan. Hopefully it's a nice spot. Yeah. Well, I'll keep you posted. First stop, we headed past the Pink Lake and into the seaside town of Port Gregory for a look. It had some shacks, a boat ramp, and a small jetty. The local beach looked nice too. Now time to explore the Pink Lake, Hut Lagoon. Hut Lagoon gets its colouring from the extremely high levels of salt and changes colour and vibrancy with the seasons, weather and time of day. We found quite a few spots around the lagoon with different shades of pink. This was our first real pink lake of the trip and we were stoked. Sure. 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 
We then officially made it into Kalbarri. You! We drove through town and straight out to Murchison Station to set up camp. The road into the station was approximately four kilometres of OK dirt road. We visited reception, found ourselves a nice spot along the Murchison River and settled in for the afternoon. Well, time to make the most of the early start and go do some exploring. We headed just down the road into Calbarry National Park. With great weather predicted, we decided it would be the perfect morning to check out nature's window and do the loop walk. Alright, here we go guys. This is a new camera lens, so it looks like it's working pretty well. Where are we, Amy? We're at Calbarry. I'm gonna yep. go check out the nature's window and do the loop walk. If you're in Calbarry, this is like the must thing you have to do. Um, so yeah, it was uh, all bitumen all the way here, which is phenomenal. Uh, we love bitumen now. <laughs> we got here at eight o'clock and there was already a dozen cars in the car park, so she's gonna get busy. We can already hear more coming. Yeah. But anyways, we want to get off and get done early, so try yep. to beat the heat. Yeah, beat the heat. That's another one out here. It gets bloody hot, so make sure you got the temps right. Uh, yeah, that's about it, really. Well, I'll keep you posted. Let's go. Only a short walk from the car park, we arrived at Nature's Window. Without a doubt, the most visited spot in the National Park. Yes, we had to queue up for our turn at the window, so be prepared to line up. We then headed off on the loop walk, which is a 9km circuit around the gorge. It's rated as a class 4, so make sure you have some good walking shoes. It didn't take long for us to start saying wow, what an absolutely stunning hike. We had both never seen landscapes like this, it did take our breaths away. The track is quite well marked with these white signposts. If you follow them around, you can't go wrong. You also pretty much are walking with the river on your right hand side most of the walk. There were a few tricky bits, but nothing too extreme. It's also safe to say we took so many photos on this walk. Towards the end of the loop trail, we found this small waterfall. We weren't sure if it's normal to see so much water in the Murchison, but we thought it was pretty cool. We're at the end of the walk guys and the flies have just poof, turned it on for us, eh? Yeah, probably last 500 meters to go and they're definitely Four. becoming more friendly. Very, very friendly. I think the hotter it gets, the uh, more flies 
That's right. just part of the Calbarry experience. Part of the experience. Everyone that we've heard come to Calbarry has had flies, so I'd expect nothing less. <sighs> Yeah, I just made a challenge to try and make the whole track without putting the fly net on. It was almost broken. I'm so close. Overall, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good hike. Yeah, good hike. Relatively easy. Yeah. Well, it took us about two hours, two and a half. Yeah. Um, to do the 8K, and that was with a bit of photos at nature's window. And look, the um, the water's flowing, which I don't know if that's normal or not. Well, yeah. I don't yeah. know if the water's normally here so pff, it looks really nice yeah. we're normally used to barren gorges with no water flow but yeah it's cool anyway yeah cool definitely thumbs up for the loop walk and uh, we've got a few more walks planned so just not today we'll do this one and that will be it for call it a day yeah but yeah all right cool next next And there we have it, the nine kilometer loop circuit done and dusted. Hey babe, you got any flies for me? Yeah, good thing. Got heaps. <laughs> Crazy. The following day we had an easy morning looking around town and then headed off to see some of Calbarry's coastal sites. Crikey, check this fellow out. There were plenty of vantage spots along the coast, each offering something unique to see. What was in common was the striking sandstone cliff faces, in contrast to the blue ocean. When we had seen photos of Kalabari, this is what we were expecting to see, and it didn't disappoint. We are at Eagle Gorge. I'm not too sure what I'm going to be looking at. <laughs> Where is it? The eagle. The eagle has landed. We finished off the day checking out some of the local beaches and even found one Rusty could have a run around on. So we just arrived back to camp and just setting up the campfire for tonight. I don't know where, <laughs> but I think Ben brought that log out from the book. Love you, mate. Because I didn't bring that over. <laughs> he must want to chop it up or something, so it'd be interesting to see what he says about it. Uh, but that's why there's a big log here. <laughs> but yeah, should be a good night by the fire. We'll make some uh, flame, build, flame grilled burgers. Beautiful night. Another night, another flame grilled whopper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, boy. Bergs and onion. Ew. Delicious no bun burgers for dinner. Hey guys, so we've gotten up at 5.30 and we're heading back into Calvary National Park to go check out Z-Bent. 
Devon River Wall. It's about a 2k walk. Um, we've got a knot. Uh, we're going to hopefully be in the park and it's even the first light and sunrise. So it's uh, pitch black at the moment, but it's 20 past six. So the sun's uh, rising a bit late over here. Yeah, I'm going to have to buy some bloody spotties at this rate and keep driving this early. Yeah, but we've got a, a big day planned today. We're seeing Z-Bend and then we're leaving Kalbarri and we're going to try and make Tamala Station by this afternoon. So it's going to be pretty pumped. It's going to be a big day and we can't wait to spend a week in Tamala. We started seeing glimpses of first light as we made our way into the Z-Bend car park. We parked up and then headed out to the lookout. It's only 6.55 and Kurt's smothered in flies and the sun's not even up yet. And we forgot our fly nets. So we're gonna do the whole Z-Bend walk with no fly nets. Wish us luck. You crazy. <laughs> So you might be thinking, Kurt, why don't you have any flies on your face? Well, it's simple. I am the fly whisperer. <laughs> See, if you don't resist, the flies don't come. Is there a lot there? Not as many as there was. <laughs> oh, they are my minions. <laughs> After half an hour, we made it to the base. Success! If you look closely, you can see the river system has created a zigzag through the gorge system. Hence the name, Z-Bend. Here we are at Z-Bend. Uh, it took us about 15 minutes from the lookout and I think overall it's like a half an hour walk or something like that. It's not that bad. And there's some stairs and stuff to help you down, but definitely worth it. Especially if you got water. Like this is beautiful. And the flies aren't bad down here at the moment, which is good. Hmm. Only about a K. A K, a K down. And now we've got a K back up. But yeah. I mean, you got some rocks and a few ladders, so you see, it need to be semi-fit, but yeah. it's not a really hard walk. Nah, it's worth it. Mm. So yeah, we'll head back up now and take some photos and... Uh, we'll head back to the lookout and have another look. Yeah. Oh. Here we are, guys. Back at camp, we had this fellow hanging around the front yard. Well, it was time to pack up camp. 
As you can see, there were plenty of riverside camping spots available, with enough room for caravans, camper trailers and tents. Look at all those chickens! Look at all those chickens! Before heading off, we visited the resident farm animals one last time. There were chickens, llamas, goats and more. We strolled around the old shearing shed, Kurt got a photo in a tank, and we checked out the original family cottage. Well thanks Merchinson Station, you have been a great base camp for exploring Kalbarri. Like always, the show must go on. Join us next time as we make it to the highly anticipated Tamala Station and see if we can make it out to Steep Point. Love our videos, why not help support us on Patreon? Don't forget to leave us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you are new. Cheers legends! <laughs>